Today, Operation Antispruik on the Sunshine Coast. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and prop news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, we've had a good reaction to our anti spruik videos, and Cookie Boy keeps throwing me more examples of price falls. And in fact, it looks to us that South East Queensland is a bit of an epicentre at the moment with price reductions. So today, I'm going to walk through some of the examples from the Sunshine Coast area of Queensland, that's north of Brisbane, of course. And as normal, we will look at the examples just picked from the portals, not particularly scientific, but nevertheless quite interesting, and also share the postcode analysis for these particular postcodes as well from my poor market model, because there's quite a lot of interesting correlations between price falls and the data in my model. So we're going to start with postcode 4573, which is in and around Coulomb Beach. And here's an example of a house on 645 squares with three bedrooms, one bathroom and two cars. And it has a gross yield of 3.85%. It was listed 54 days ago on the 9th of August 2022. On the 23rd of August, it was listed at offers over $1.1 million. And on the 20th of September, the price was reduced to offers over $950,000. And if we look at the data for this particular postcode, 4573, there are around 12,000 households in the postcode with 30% owning outright, 39% borrowing, in other words with a mortgage, and 30% renting. Mortgage stress is at 47% of households who are borrowing. Rental stress is 28% and stressed investors 23%. So the overall financial stress metric is around 35% of households. Now, if we look at the price scenarios, and as always, I look at best, base and worst. The best case scenario assumes that interest rates don't go much higher. Inflation comes down next year. And as a result of that, there is still some upside to property prices in this area. The base case suggests interest rates will go higher and stay higher for longer and that we will get recessions around other parts of the world, but not in Australia. And the worst case scenario is a recession here in Australia as well with higher interest rates, but then actually rates coming back down again due to the recession. So in this scenario, the best case scenario is a cumulative rise of about 7% over the next three years for this postcode. The base case is a fall of 16% over three years and the worst case is a fall of 37%. Looking at the property price profiles, 74% of the properties in the area are houses, 8% are units, 17% are other types of property, including over commercial properties and shops. The people ratio, that's the ratio of properties to the number of people in the postcode, is 2.22. And on census night last year, 12.5% or 1,645 properties were reported as vacant. That's probably something to do with holiday homes and also short-term lets. The gross rental yield from an investment perspective is on average around 4.7%. So this one we looked at earlier on was a little bit below that. Net investment yields about 1.4%. And the ATO reported that the average taxable income, that's for an individual of course, is $77,300. Whereas the household income based on the census is $92,000. And looking at the disposable monthly income, so this is income after tax, the average disposable income is $5,635 a month. And the typical borrower is putting 42% of their income to the mortgage, which is $2,400. And the typical renter is putting 43.3% of their income on the rent at $2,441. Now, here's another example of a property in the same area at Peregrine Springs, actually. This is a house on 510 square meters. It's four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, and the gross rental yield is 4.55%. Listed 59 days ago on the 4th of August. On the 6th of September, it was listed at offers over $1.029 million. And on the 20th of September, it was reduced to $975,000. 
And here are a couple more examples in the same area. The first one is a house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars on 750 squares with a gross rental yield of 3.32% listed 59 days ago on the 4th of August. And on that date, it was on the market at $1.2 million guide. And now on the 20th of September, it's on just over $1.1 million. And here's another one, the Sump Perrigan Springs, a house on 869 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, gross rental yield 4.03%, listed 109 days ago on the 15th of June. And on the 18th of July, on at $1.249 million. But on the 14th of September, offers over $1.1 million. Another example, Coulomb Beach, listed 60 days ago on the 3rd of August. It's a house on 607 square metres, three bedrooms, one bathroom, two cars with a gross rental yield of 3.07%. And on the 4th of August, it was on at $1.295 million. On the 20th of September, it was on at $1.19 million. Another one in the same area, listed 180 days ago. And here it's a house, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On the 15th of July... It was on at $1.349 million. Now on the 31st of August, it's on at $1.199 million. Another one, listed 109 days ago. It's a house on 605 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and two cars, with a gross rental yield of 2.61%. That's pretty low, I think. And on the 11th of August, it was on at $1.5 million. On the 16th of September, reduced to $1.4 million. Now, this one was listed on the 27th of June 2022, now 97 days ago. It was four bedrooms, three bathrooms, two car on 660 squares. It's a house. And on the 13th of July, it was up $2.4 million. On the 19th of July, it was dropped to $2.2 million. 40 days ago, it was dropped to $2 million. And... Now it's $2 million plus. Another one in Paragon Springs this time. Listed 40 days ago on the 23rd of August. It's a house, 604 square metres, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. On the 6th of September, it was offers over $1.6 million. On the 27th of September, offers over $1.5 million. Another one in Paragon Springs. It's a house. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, a gross rental yield of 2.53%. It was listed 41 days ago on the 22nd of August, and it's a 553 square metre plot. Now, on the 23rd of August, it was on at $1.85 million, but on the 25th of September, it was reduced to $1.75 million. Another example, Peregrine Beach. It's a house on 605 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, listed 121 days ago on the 3rd of June. And on the 17th of August, it was on at $1.795 million. On the 12th of September, reduced to $1.695 million. Another one in the same postcode listed 156 days ago on the 29th of April. It's a house. 761 squares, seven bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. And on the 13th of July, it was on at $1.8 million, but on the 8th of August, it was reduced to $1.7 million. And another one. Listed 46 days ago on the 17th of August, it's a house on 608 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On the 17th of August, it was on at $2.2 million. On the 22nd of September, it was on at $1.95 million. And one more in the same postcode. Listed a long time ago, it says, I'm not sure whether that's completely accurate, difficult to check. It's a house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars on 762 squares. On the 25th of August, April 2022 was on at $2.3 million. On the 3rd of May, reduced to $2.09 million. And another one in the same postcode, listed 113 days ago on the 11th of June. It's a house, 800 square metres, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, four cars. And on the 10th 
of August, it was on at $2.25 million. On the 3rd of September, it was reduced to offers over $2.1 million. Now we go to postcode 4558, Maruchidor. This one's a house. It's on 607 square meters. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, one in car, with a gross rental yield of 3.93%, listed 41 days ago on the 22nd of August. And on the 23rd of August, it was on $895,000. Now on the 11th of September, offers over $855,000. And if we look at this particular postcode, there are around 10,000 households in the postcode. 30% own outright, 26% of borrowing, 42% of renting. And 45% of those with a mortgage are in mortgage stress. 68% with a rent are in rental stress. Overall financial stress at 47%. So the best case scenario is a rise of 1.5% over the next three years cumulative. The base case a fall of 22%. The worst case a fall of 42%. And there are 42% of properties in the postcode as houses, 33% units and 24% other types of property. Population ratio is 1.86 and there were 12.7% vacant or 1,148 properties vacant. Average taxable income from the ATO is just over 70,900 and the average household from the census had a total income of around $72,000. The average disposable monthly income is $4,700 and the typical rent is 44.2% of disposable income at just over $2,000. The average rent's disposable income at 43.5% or just over $2,000 per month on the rent. Another one in the same postcode and this was listed 76 days ago. It's a house on 710 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, seven cars. On the 17th of August, it was $950,000, but on the 5th of September, it was $895,000. Another one here, listed 74 days ago on the 20th of July, 2022. It's a house on 506 squares, six bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, a gross rental yield of 4.69%. And on the 26th of July, it was $950,000, but on the 23rd of August, it was reduced to offers over $900,000. And by the way, 4.69% is just slightly above the average gross investment yield for the postcode, which is at 4.5%. Another one listed the 15th of August, 48 days ago. It's a house, 305 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. And on the 16th of August, it was on offers over $1.2 million. On the 22nd of September, offers over $1.15 million. Now we're going to postcode 4556. And this one's at Sippy Downs. It's a house on 510 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, a gross rental yield of 4.9%, listed 46 days ago on the 17th of August. On the 30th of August, offers over 799000 on the 16th of September, offers over $745,000. And if we look at postcode 4556, around 18,000 households in the postcode, 33% own outright, 41% have a mortgage, 25% are renting. And looking at stress, mortgage stress is not too bad, but rental stress is at 73.5% of households who are renting. On the scenario side, the best case is up 4.6% over the next three years. The base case is down 19%, the worst case down 38%. There are 73.1% of properties that are houses in the postcode, 10% are units, 16% of other types of property. The population ratio is 2.38 and the vacancy rate on census night was 5.5% or just over 1,000 properties. The gross investment yield is 4.6%, net investment yield is 1.1%. Average taxable income is just over $81,000. The average household income on the census is $87,000. And the typical disposable monthly income is around $5,400. And the average mortgage is 43.9% going on the mortgage at $2,400. The average rent is 41.1% at $2,247 a month. Another one in the same postcode. This was listed 67 days ago. It's a house on 1,158 squares, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, three cars, 
On the 16th of August, it was $949,000. On the 6th of September, down to $899,000. Another one in the same postcode again. 53 days ago, it was listed on the 10th of August. It's a house, 809 squares, six bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. On the 14th of September, it was offers over $1.1 million. On the 23rd of September, offers over $995,000. Another one in the same postcode. This was passed in auction 113 days ago on the 11th of June. And it was then on the market 78 days ago at $1.35 million. Reduced 66 days ago to $1.295 million. And now, 29 days ago, it's on at $1.195 million. It's a house, three bedrooms, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, three cars. Another one in the same postcode on the 10th of August, listed 53 days ago. This house on 440 squares has a gross yield of 3.49%. It's four bedrooms, three bathrooms, two cars. 25th of August, on at $1.25 million on the 9th of September, offers over $1.195 million. And here's another one listed 66 days ago on the 28th of July. It's a house on 1,375 square metres, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, three cars. On the 24th of August, it was on at $1.75 million. On the 18th of September, on at $1.65 million. Now we're going to postcode 4551. And this was listed 79 days ago on the 15th of July. It's a house on 168 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On the 31st of July, it was on at 649,000. On the 31st of August, on at 599,000. And looking at this particular postcode, there are 27,700 households. 34% are owning outright, 35% are borrowing, and 30% are renting. 33% of those borrowing are in mortgage stress, 66% of those renting are in rental stress, and the overall financial stress is at 38%. Looking at the price scenarios, a cumulative 4.1% over the next three years is the best case, down 19.5% is the base case, down 39% is the worst case. And there are 71% of those properties that are houses, 13.8% are units, and 14.8% are other types of property. The population ratio is 2.14%. On census night, 12.1% of properties, or 3,587, were vacant, which again suggests second homes and also holiday accommodation. Gross investment yield on average is 4.6%. The net investment yield is 1.1%. Average taxable income is about $73,700. The average household census income is $77,400. And the monthly disposable income is $4,868. Typical mortgage is 48.1% of disposable income, or 2,340. The typical rent is 46.1% at 2,243. We go on to another one in the same postcode, listed 17 days ago on the 15th of September. It's a house with a gross rental yield of 4.42%, 313 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. On the 16th of September, it was on $749,000. On the 21st of September, dropped to $699,000. Here's another one in the same postcode. Listed 44 days ago, it's a house with a gross rental of 5.07%. 350 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. It was listed on the 6th of September at $749,000. On the 14th of September, on at $699,000. Another one in the same postcode. This is 74 days ago with a gross rental yield of 4.7%. It's a house on 450 square metres, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. And on the 14th of August, it was $799,000. Now on the 31st of August, inviting buyers from $749,000. Another one, 47 days ago, with a gross rental yield of 4.73%, a house on 420 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On the 4th of September, $799,000. Now on the 27th of September, dropped to $749,000. And yet more. One listed 123 days ago on the 1st of June. Gross rental yield, 4.53%. A house on 400 squares with four bedrooms, two bathrooms and two cars. On the 15th of July, it was offers over $799,000. Now on the 17th of August, 
offers over $749,000. And here we go again, same postcode, listed 44 days ago on the 19th of August. Gross rental yield 4.73%, a house, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On 23rd of August, 799000 On the 14th of September, $749,000. Now we go to Little Mountain, and here 46 days ago on the 17th of August, this house on 876 squares has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, and on the 18th of August it was listed for $810,000. On the 30th of August, $769,000. One more. This was a house on 462 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, currently on at $780,000. And it was listed 131 days ago with an offer price of $949,000, reduced 81 days ago to $850,000, reduced 31 days ago to $829,000, and now at $780,000. And this one was listed 107 days ago on the 17th of June. It's a house on 555 squares, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, two cars, on the 13th of July, $849,000. On the 19th of July, reduced to $799,000. One more, listed 102 days ago on the 22nd of June. It's a house with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car. On the 14th of July, offers over $900,000. On the 4th of September, offers over $865,000. And another one. Listed 39 days ago on the 24th of August. It's a house on 618 squares, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, two cars. And it was listed on the 6th of September at $889,000, but on the 21st of September reduced to $859,000. And this one in Little Mountain was listed 136 days ago on the 19th of May. It's a house on 739 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. Gross rental yields 4.35%. And on the 24th of May, it was on offers over $949,000. On the 15th of July, offers over $899,000. And this one at Golden Beach, listed 93 days ago on the 1st of July. It's a house, 663 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car. On the 26th of August, listed at $1 million. On the 16th of September, down to $929,000. Another one at Dickey Beach, 62 days ago, on the 1st of August, it's a house, 597 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. On the 3rd of August, $1.2 million. On the 24th of September, offers over $1 million. And another one here, 85 days ago, at house, 723 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. On the 7th of August, on at $1.15 million. On the 16th of August, dropped to $1.08 million. This one's at Pelican Waters, listed 59 days ago. It's a house, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars on 600 squares. On the 7th of August, offers over $1.195 million. On the 2nd of September, offers over $1.095 million. Another one listed 83 days ago on the 7th of July. It's a house on 791 squares, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, five cars. It's with a gross rental yield of 2.86%. On 21st of July, it was on at $1.25 million. And on the 22nd of July, it was on at $1.15 million. And this one was listed 86 days ago on the 8th of July. It's a house on 529 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars, this is a Battery Hill. And on the 31st of August, it was on at $1.219 million. On the 13th of September, on at $1.175 million. And this one here in Little Mountain, with four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars, on 917 squares, it's a house, is currently on offers above $1.2 million. It was listed 188 days ago on the 28th of March, Originally on at 1.399 million, reduced 144 days ago to 1.3 million dollars, and now 1.2 million dollars. Another one listed 54 days ago on the 9th of August. It's a house on 405 squares, three bedrooms, one bathroom, one car. 
2nd of September, it was on at $1.375 million. Now on the 28th of September, it's on at $1.249 million. And another one at Moffat Beach, this time listed 51 days ago on the 12th of August. It's a house on 900 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. Offers around $1.6 million on the 16th of August. Now on the 10th of September, offers over $1.5 million. One more. Listed 48 days ago on the 15th of August, it's a house on 653 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, four cars at Kings Beach. Listed on the 9th of September, offers over $1.95 million. Now, on the 27th of September, offers over $1.5 million. And this one here was listed at Moffat Beach 52 days ago. It's a house, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, four cars, current on at $1.75 million. It was listed 49 days ago at $1.85 million, then reduced to $1.8 million 29 days ago, and now at $1.75 million. One more at Pelican Waters, listed 66 days ago on the 28th of July. It's a house, 860 squares, with a gross rental yield of just 2%. That's extremely low. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars. 28th of July on at $1.995 million on the 31st of August, offers over $1.85 million. Another one at Pelican Waters, listed 88 days ago. It's a house on 953 squares with five bedrooms, three bathrooms, five cars. And on the 19th of July, it was on at $2.15 million. On the 28th of September, it was on at $2.05 million. And so there you have it. That's the story of the Sunshine Coast. And you can see quite consistent falls there. And I'd also highlight the high number of listings in these postcodes, which suggests something is afoot. And in fact, all of my surveys suggest that the number of people looking to sell is increasing. And quite a few of those are probably investors who are just not getting the returns that they hope to get. And of course, they're worried about capital falls. So shout out to Cookie for pulling the information out. And also just to say to all those who live in comments, on these anti-spruiking videos. I do read them all and I am making a record of other areas that you're asking for information on and we'll try and get back and do some more later. But the bottom line is quite clear that the epicentre of the falls in Brisbane and the surrounding area up in South East Queensland is quite significant now and we are seeing significant reductions, particularly in houses. Remember, of course, that they ran up significantly over the last couple of years and these falls now seem to me to be accelerating. So I'm afraid we have to expect more falls ahead. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.